Rupert Huck was also in the congregation. Unlike Sir David, who was a long-serving member of the governing Conservative Party, she's an MP with a main opposition Labour Party. But she says that Sir David was the sort of politician whom all sides could appreciate. What I found striking about the service today was the number of people who turned out, um, people from different parliamentary intakes, people that are in the House of Lords now, people from different parties. And I think that just shows what a unifying figure David Amos was. And, you know, growing up, I'd have never thought I'd be discussing the contents of a speech delivered by Anne Widdicombe with other MPs in an approving manner, but that's what I found myself doing today. Right. I mean, Anne Widdicombe, for our audience around the world, she's a pungently Eurosceptic, hard-right former member of the Conservative Party. And you, I mean, as you say, you are on the other end of the political spectrum when it comes to Europe, when it comes to politics generally. W what was it about David Amos that drew you, drew many people to feel that he was this sort of... He was this genial parliamentarian. Yeah, I mean, again, on paper, David Amos and I completely opposite in what we believed in. But the thing is, we're all human beings. And although the House of Commons, it's very layout, it's adversarial, you're in a face off with the party opposite. He was just a nice person. And I mean, I've known him. And again, it's very difficult to talk about him in the past tense almost um knew him since being elected in 2015 but really got to know him on what was the last week of his life who knew and that was because what on, we, a, on a visit to the middle east that's right we we're on the delegation together i think there are a dozen mps all together and so it was best part of a week we were all away and that is a kind of bonding experience anyway and um I gave the concluding speech in the tributes in the House of Commons and the last line was that uh, maybe we should all be a bit more David, we should all be less cross and more cross party. And some of the other people delivering tributes said that he almost transcended party politics. Uh, I think there was one of his fellow Essex MPs describing being on the stump with him and someone said conservative no way am i voting conservative i'm voting for that david amos so <laughs> that ability to yeah just to be a nice person yeah i mean you know there will be again people listening around the world some of them who, who aren't lucky enough to live in democracies who will may think well it's fantastic to have adversarial politics I'd, I'd give my right arm for that but i guess your point is that one can be ferociously in opposition to somebody politically but just not for it to be laced with hate and bile which i guess inevitably sometimes in parliament the rhetoric gets that way yes i mean he had very human qualities while we were away you know, my son was missing me. I did a video call with him and David Amos was next to me. And I said, so David, talk to my boy. He's very naughty sort of thing. And not everyone would have agreed to that, but they had a nice old chat. And then, you know, the last time I ever saw him, and it was less than 48 hours before he was no longer with us, was at the baggage reclaim at Heathrow Airport. My particular suitcase I think I'd been looking the wrong way or something was still going around the centrifuge he insisted that he waited with me until it came everyone else had, had gone by then and I think the last thing he said was you know be nice to that boy of yours you're a bit hard on him he sounds just from this the brief time that we've been chatting like he he was a profoundly decent man I mean, you will be aware, well, I mean, of course you're aware because you're on the end of, of, a, of a lot of abuse yourself, like many other MPs, but that there is this debate, as sadly there's been when there's been other acts of violence towards MPs, as to how you get the balance right between accessibility and accessibility for your constituents and security for you. Do you have any reflections on that? I mean, I guess we have to have something lasting out of this 
David Amos wouldn't want everyone to cower behind security screens and people around the world, other parliamentarians are often struck by how accessible we are. We go to dusty community centres and conduct advice surgeries, which is actually what he was doing when this awful assassination happened. I don't think he would want to lose that. But at the same time, I guess we must all take sensible precautions. And this is the second time I've seen this in my relatively short MP life, that one of our own has been murdered in cold blood in an advice surgery after the murder of another friend of mine, Joe Cox. We were advised to let the police know where our surgery is going to be and to have pre-booked appointments. I found with myself it's something that in 2016 we did for a bit and then it slipped. So I find sometimes you get a rush of hand-wringing, something must be done, and maybe even panicky overreaction in the aftermath of a tragedy, but then it's forgotten. And we should ensure that not only that those sensible precautions are taken, but maybe we lower the tone of politics so there's more civility and decency. Rupert Huck, uh, Labour MP on the day, her friend, uh, Sir David Amos from the Conservative Party uh, had his funeral at Westminster Cathedral. That's it from this edition of News Hour from me, Tim Franks, and the rest of the team here in London. Thanks for listening. <laughs>